to the Nonprofit Show. Thrilled to have you back here. Today, our guest is none other than Trevor Skillen. He's joining us from Canada with Foundation Search. And Trevor's here to talk to us about AI, artificial intelligence, and really understanding chat GPT and your nonprofit. So Trevor, we're excited to have you. And I will ask you to share more about yourself in just a moment. But for those of you that have joined us, Hopefully we're not new, but today might look a little different because we are launching the nonprofit tech talk uh, really, you know, here with Trevor's conversation. So uh, we're still the same. Julia Patrick is here. She's the CEO at the American Nonprofit Academy. And I'm Jarrett Ransom. I'm still your nonprofit nerd. Excuse me, CEO of the Raven Group. And I am excited to nerd out over this conversation on today's nonprofit tech talk. Hey, we also want to say thank you and extend our gratitude to our amazing presenting sponsors, many whom I will see in just a couple of days in New Orleans for AFP Icon. But I want to extend uh, again a huge shout out to our friends at Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Fundraising Academy at National University. Nonprofit Thought Leader, Your Part-Time Controller, Nonprofit Nerd, and Staffing Boutique. Thank you so very much to these companies. You know, they invest, Julia, to our conversations, to this platform, but I really like to remind our viewers across the globe, they invest in you, your mission, your organization, and your community. So please do check them out because they're, they're here to help you. With their help, we have produced nearly 800 episodes and we are still growing. So you can find us on streaming platforms, podcast platforms, so video, audio, however you like to consume that. But wait, there's more because I still love that good ShamWow commercial. <laughs> you can download the app. We are on uh, both smart, you know, all uh, smartphones. So Android, iPhone, whatever that might look like. So go ahead and download the Nonprofit Show app and you will get this recording of today's show here with Trevor uh, in just a few hours. So thank you for that. Trevor, again, welcome. Uh, those of you watching, those of you listening, Trevor Skillen, CEO, Foundation Metasoft Systems and Foundation Search. Welcome, Trevor. Well, thank you very much. I'm happy to be here, uh, Jared and Julia, and uh, excited to talk about uh, some of the exciting things happening in, in uh, AI and, and uh, uh, how, uh, how we're responding to it and uh, to take all of your questions and uh, hopefully give you good answers. Yeah, well, we have a lot to cover in a little yeah. bit of time, but would you do us the favor and share a little bit with us about Foundation Search so that we have at least that baseline of who you are and your knowledge in this arena? Good, happy to do that. So uh, we've been in business a long time, 88. Uh, we've been in the nonprofit sector uh, with digital products since 1995. Uh, so pre-internet um, and our, our first digital product came out on uh, a CD-ROM. Uh, exactly. A what? A what was that? <laughs> Kevin, out, that's my that's my time. <laughs> I came out on the CD. It was, it was the dark ages. Everything came out on CD-ROM, and um, <laughs> that lasted about ten months. And this new thing called the internet came along, and um, uh, we weren't quite sure what to make of it. But we thought, well, let's just get our product, take the CD-ROM, copy it over to a website. So we spent an afternoon building a website, and we were. Uh, we were online in an afternoon. Wow. It wasn't yeah. a pretty, was not a pretty product. <laughs> but <laughs> I, I think but that, that is agility. I mean, that is wow. tenacity, um, innovation, and agility, right? So was the screen still dark and the font was yellow? Um, well, I'll tell you, I did all the graphics. You can imagine how bad that was. And I'll, uh, if you want, to, I'll go back to way back and show you... Uh, why I'm not a graphic artist, but the, right. <laughs> was get, get the information out there to people. And uh, the wonderful thing, uh, you know, we found about the web immediately was that you could be experimental um, mm. the way that you can't be when you're publishing a product and, you know, putting it in an envelope and shipping it out to somebody. You can't right. ship it once it's been shipped. Uh, but with the web, you can uh, throw all sorts of stuff up and say, hey, what do you think? Uh, is, is this something that uh, is valuable to you? Do you like it? Um, anything you don't like about it. So we, we continue to use the web in that way. And, and uh, so sort of it's the, uh, the spirit of innovation that, that I think um, is, is allowed by the web that's so powerful for, uh, for developers uh, and for clients too, that can provide feedback. We, we get um, typically, you know, hundred pieces of feedback every day from our clients about what they like, what they don't like, um, 
other ideas. So this is really a, um, a community built product. Foundation Search itself is, as the name says, a product that uh, helps organizations identify appropriate funders for their causes in uh, both Canada and the US. So we catalog um, about 210,000 funders in, in North America, um, typically foundations, but corporate sources as well. And uh, uh, we also have a database of 325, it keeps changing, 325,000 uh, yeah. uh, nonprofits. So it's, it's a, a large body of information about the nonprofit sector that is fully searchable and, and easily used. Wow. Amazing. Well, you know, it's, it's, uh, you talked about your legacy and your journey within the digital space and how, you know, you've navigated new ideas and new products and new delivery methods. And one of those things that I think is so fascinating, and we talked about this in the green room chatter is that the nonprofit sector is just woefully behind the times when it comes to embracing or adopting new technology. I mean, Jarrett and I see this all the time. It's one of our big things that we've talked about from the beginning, from the very first day of the nonprofit show. And this new thing of chat GPT has come up. It is, it is like, it's just revolutionary how you can use it. Everybody's talking about it. And yet the nonprofit sector has kind of stepped back a little bit. Some are going forward. So paint the picture. What is chat GPT? Sure. Wonderful. Uh, happy to do that. So chat GPT is a, um, well, it starts from modest beginnings, basically uh, a chat bot, something that, that talks to you, um, um, answers questions in, in uh, uh, English format. So I think the real appeal, uh, you know, to us and our, our users, um, we've had it integrated into Foundation Search for three weeks now. Uh, and we've had thousands of uh, uh, interactions. Uh, uh, and, and the feedback is that, um, you know, people are loving the fact that they can interact uh you know, with, with uh, an intelligent piece of software and in a very natural way. Uh, I, th I think um, most people naturally compare it to Google and, and they find that um, searching for things and ending up with lists of hits uh, uh, certainly is helpful, but, you know, uh, asking a question and, and, and getting a natural language answer uh, in, in whatever level of detail you want uh, is, is certainly more attractive and certainly uh, uh, more appealing to at least our customers, the vast majority of our customers. Yeah. Um, so I, I personally love it, right? Like uh, yeah. I remember hearing about it and thinking, what, you know, what is this? And then really thinking about how AI has integrated and, and really just like found its way in the nonprofit. Actually, when we chatted, Trevor, and ironically, I'm going to New Orleans for the AFP icon coming up. But last year's ICON conference in uh, Las Vegas, I realized AI was there, right? Artificial intelligence was there. It was on the floor. It was being talked about. Um, and, you know, it has shown up also on uh, nonprofits' websites by way of the donor page, you know, where we go onto the donor uh, donation page um, and it automatically, based off of my information from my search engines, will provide a suggested donation amount, right? So it's been there and I'm really hearing more and more about it. And I'm just excited because we do, we nonprofit leaders do so much with so little, so little time, so little money. And I think that AI and where it's stepping into the space is really going to help us. Can you talk to us, you know, about the future of what AI looks like? And again, you know, I keep saying AI, but it's, it is artificial intelligence and um, talk to us from what you've seen, Trevor, of the future of AI and how it's going to impact organizations in the nonprofit sector. Wonderful. Wonderful. So um, let, let me just sort of um, back up a little bit about chat GPT and say, you know, the great thing about it is that it's something you can use right away and, and be productive with right away. It doesn't take, mm -hmm. excuse me, any training at all. Right. Uh, and uh, so what we're noticing is we've had about 4,000 questions through through AI and, and uh, uh, people are being very applied about how to use it right away with no training. And, and that's, 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 to me, the holy grail of technology is, you know, <laughs> you should just be able to sit down and use it. Uh, you shouldn't have to be a programmer. You shouldn't have to take a course. And so people are saying, Write, write me a letter of inquiry to this foundation uh, looking for this amount of money for 
you know, this caused this outcome and, and they're getting wonderful output. Um, so I, so I think you can sit down and in 30 seconds, get immediate benefit from using a, a tool like this. So I, I think that's right. the, the strong appeal for nonprofits, uh, I believe. Um, and so, you know, I, I think that's not just true of nonprofits, but there've been hundred million users adopting this technology in the last, uh, eight weeks. So, uh, so I think that's, what's creating the incredible bonds and, and excitement. So, um, where's this all going? Um, uh, well, with 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 Chat GPT specifically, we're going to see sort of rapid uh, introduction, new versions. So uh, our our particular implementations on Chat GPT three point five, um, we're finding it's right eighty five percent of the time. Um, okay. The other fifty percent of the time, it's making up fantasy answers. So, um, <laughs> so let's uh, be uh, honest, humans do that too, right? Like it's not no just AI. <laughs> No. Yeah. And, you know, I think that's the issue of stewardship. It's like if you're, you know, in programming and you have a report that comes through, it is still incumbent upon you to check and verify that data to make sure that right. whatever is being delivered is accurate. Just like yeah. when you get monthly reports, you know, from the accounting department, uh, from development, it's not like we're just sitting back and this work is getting done. There's still a stewardship impact here. Exactly. I, it, exactly. I think it's even more um, stringent. Yeah, I, I think so. Somebody described that as one of our, our, our support people at Center Client described this as having a, a really bright, enthusiastic communications intern that writes a thousand words per minute, doesn't get sick, doesn't cost you that much, but yeah. you know, whose work you have to check very carefully. So I think that's a really good description. I uh, like that. Yeah, <laughs> I love that. And, and I think, um, yeah, so as things, as things move forward with chat specifically, uh, version four is out now. Um, it is, uh, you know, literally a thousand times more uh, more powerful than, than 3.5 and, and uh, chat GPT-5 is supposed to be out by the end of the year. Uh, wow. So we're going to see very rapid uh, advances in, in the, uh, you know, quality of information that it has access to and, and its answers and the complexity of, of uh, uh, you know, uh, response and, and and what you can achieve. So uh, oh. we're, we're already experimenting with this technology in terms of having it write um, parts of our, our our code in our products. So um, wow. our, our dev team is quite busy these days looking at all the various use cases. And I think um, just to, to talk about, you know, um, you know, how a nonprofit might use this, I think the key is to say, you know, what problems am I having with writing communication and, and uh, just make a list of the things that, you know, take time are causing problems that you don't have the resources for. And, and uh, um, I mean, that's what we're working on with, with our clients. We're working on building up full proposals automatically, um, which is a, a major roadblock for, for nonprofits. So you, the lack of resources to fundraise, uh, to identify appropriate uh, organizations to apply to, to respond to all their information requirements. We, we think um, AI and, and tools like chat are, are going to provide all sorts of opportunities to uh, do much more with the same number of people. Yeah. Uh, you so. know, it's, we, it's interesting. We have a, a former guest who's come on, Josh from Yearly, who's written in. And Yearly is a fascinating company because they help nonprofits produce mm -hmm. um, their annual reports. And um, they, he's written in, he's like, you know, we're using this to, to write annual report content, but he mirrored the exact same thing that you said. And that is, yes, still have to work it. You still need to, and he uses the word, you know, human touch. You've yes. got, to, it, that's not gonna go away. And so I think in, in our sector, um, there's still, and I use the word stewardship, there's still this factor, uh, just like we wouldn't bring on a brand new employee and say, go get them, Buster. I mean, you gotta have oversight. And yeah, so no question, no question. And there's a whole, um, there's a whole discipline, and, and it, it's called you know prompt analytics, which which uh, you know really teaches you how to frame questions properly so you get the right answers or the answers that you'd like to get uh, yes. out of the uh, you know out of the tool. So um, and and that is yeah, not surprisingly, you know, detailed instructions about what you want, what format, how many words, uh, right. what you want it to look like, and I think. Uh, like everything else, I say managing a journey, you need to be quite specific about what you want to get a quality result out. Uh, so, um, 
we're, we're actually compiling a list of what we think are going to be very useful resources for nonprofits specifically in terms of using tools like this based on the feedback we're getting from our clients, uh, uh, you know, how they're formulating requests. So um, I, I can make that available to anybody that wants it afterwards. I, I can give you a web address uh, to, to email me personally, and I'll make sure our support teams can get with any client, non-client, but it's available for free. I think um, uh, hopefully it will help people make better use of these sorts of tools. Yeah. Trevor, I'm I'm curious if you would be willing to answer this very um, I don't know direct but leadership question. When AI came to the forefront in conversation, and you as the CEO, could you share with us how those conversations went about integrating it into your platform? Because I'm curious if it was like absolutely we're going to adopt this, or was there some pushback? Um, you know, and and what was that timeline of you saying yes, you your team saying yes, and then implementing it? Would you be willing to share and like sure. you know a little bit about that? I had, so I'll put my bias on the table. I've always lived on the bleeding edge. I like technology. Um, I, I started out life as, as a software engineer. So um, things like this are sort of like Christmas presents under the tree for me. So so my bias is to use things, but um, okay. you know, to you uh, obviously use things that are also useful. So so sure. uh, how did I hear about this? Um, so a technology friend last August uh, told me about this cool new tool called ChatGPT. I thought it was just a chat box. He said, no, you've got to download it. So I downloaded a uh, product called Genie uh, out of the app store. And um, I began to ask it a bunch of questions generally, uh, but things I knew to see how accurate it was um, uh, in, in terms of things I knew. So I asked about my company, about me, who I knew. Um, it was right most of the time. Uh, was very creative, the balance of the time. And so... So I thought, okay, this is interesting technology. It's easy to use. Um, you know, I, I find a lot of our clients when I when I start to look at our product want a more natural interface in, in terms of getting information. They they don't want to do Boolean queries and and fill in selector boxes and filters. Uh, so this might be a really good tool for people who uh, uh, you know don't want to uh, uh, you know be too technical and. and we, we, we uh, you know, obviously are in the technical business, so we thought this is a very natural interface that will give people answers to questions and, and produce the things they need, um, you know, blogs and reports and letters of inquiry and everything else that uh, uh, we have a professional services team they routinely ask us to do for them. So um, so that's that really was kind of the go, no go decision, uh, sitting at home, just spending a few hours with it and saying, this is really cool technology. We think we can deliver a lot of benefit to our clients. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not exactly sure how they're going to use it, but uh, we have some ideas. And, and so that's usually the um, the test we put things through that we can we can easily implement it, uh, get it up. It needs to take it down if it doesn't work mm -hmm. uh, or causes problems, but um, uh, we rarely do that. And so when it's easy to put technology out there and ask people for their opinion, um, that's usually the right thing to do for companies like, like ours. And uh, we've got a great tech team that's also very excited about new technology and getting feedback as well. So um, uh, so that, that really is what drove our decision. It's, it's uh, not a hard decision to make. As I say, when you're, you're shipping things in, in disk, then you take a little bit more time to think about the implications of what you're shipping because you can't take it back. But with the web, right. we can take it all down and say, thank you for your feedback. It was a bad idea. Uh, we all learned something here. So I, right. I've done that once. So, uh, and uh, so that's what drives our, our innovation is client feedback, quick deployment, and listening carefully to what people have to say. So, um, so uh, the feedback is always very interesting because we're not fundraisers uh, professionally. So we, we don't know, you know, uh, what's going to benefit people. Uh, so does that answer your question? It does. And I really appreciate, you know, you sharing that because the thing that Julie and I have noticed over the last three years is the nonprofits that are being extremely successful or have seen the greatest success mm -hmm. have been the ones to adopt something, anything early, you so, know, be nimble, right? Like make a decision, implement it. Um, and, and I really appreciate you sharing that because as a leader, I think it's often, you know, we don't get the opportunity to ask that question. So I, I appreciate you, you answering that. 
Well, let's let's move us, um, Julia, into, you know, how do we stay current? Because if there's a lot going on and you mentioned there's a 4.0 4 or a 5.0 coming from chat GPT by the end of this year, there's a lot of happening, right? So how do we keep current and what should we be looking for? Uh, yeah, that's, that's a great question. So I, I think there are all sorts of discussion groups. Um, we're developers, so we are, you know, plugged into GitHub and a number of others, about developer websites, forums, uh, <coughs> code sharing sites. So we we naturally see what people are doing, what they're talking about. Uh, you know, we go onto the vendor sites themselves. OpenAI is a great source of information. Um, I, I think um, Google, Google is certainly, we, we, we Google all the time. Uh, I, I'm plugged into a bunch of news feeds. Um, I, I think a lot of the information is not specific uh, with regard to technology to, to nonprofits. And I think, uh, as I say, we're we're compiling a resource list of organ of, of, of sites and and, and uh, uh, locations where people can get regular feeds. Uh, and I, I will make that available. I, I think uh, because you know nonprofits do have very specific needs, and uh, um, I, I think uh, that will be something that uh, is beneficial to do. We we uh, typically share this with our customers via blog uh, or other sorts of news alerts. I, I think you received one of them. Um, so we're happy to share that with, with your audience. And that's, yeah, of course, free of charge. And uh, uh, we can update that. Uh, we typically update it on a monthly basis. Uh, so people can keep current with any new new information, new sites that we found. Um, so it seems to me that we do need to be thinking um, forward about, or at least receptive to new ideas and, um, you said something really interesting. It's like once a month, if we at least dedicate some time once a month to like what's new and what's popping, um, not that we have to run out there and jump on that bandwagon, but to at least understand the um, vocabulary and the possibility. I agree. Yeah. I don't have to come back every month. You can five minutes. I'll tell you everything has changed every month. I'm, I'm happy to do that for you. And, uh, Careful, we might hold you to that, right? With our nonprofit tech talk. I'm happy to do that. It'd be uh, be my honor to do that. Actually, it's a good way to get the information out as well. And and uh, uh, so, just say the word. I love it. It's so important, and I just think it's also Jarrett. I mean, you and I have said this so. Gosh, so often now for three going on into our fourth year um, that we really need to be um, in the across the sector more open to new ideas and technology. And um, we're so far behind. And and it's really interesting, Jarrett, because we work in such a scarcity mode and and like chat GPT can really be a solution for that nonprofit that is struggling with just managing their tasks. Oh yeah. You know, and you know, there, there's so much out there. Uh, we have a, another former guest. Uh, you're very popular, Trevor. Our former guests are showing up to hear from you. Um, you know, at Cardena saying that they're using AI to calculate the donor specific impact with each car donation. So each vehicle donation that's made. So really looking at how, you know, technology can drive can drive innovation. And, you know, I personally have used it on so many things. Um, ironically, there was a, an email I needed to respond to. I wasn't pleased when I received the email. I was, you know, pretty full of emotion. And so I copied the email, I put it in chat GPT yeah. and I said, respond to this favorably. <laughs> Very good. No, that's a, that's a really good way to do it. There's no question. So yeah, I, I think the, uh, <laughs> I, I think yeah, the possibilities are endless. The use cases are all there, and it's just up to our imaginations to decide what what to do with the product. And I uh, I try to inspire people. To say, what are your three biggest problems, and and then try to work a technology solution into addressing those. Uh, it, it's it's always a great question to ask anybody because it's non tactical, non threatening, and and uh, then right. you know it's up to technologists to say, well, how can we remove you know, as, as much of that irritation, uh, solve as many of these problems as we as we can. And I think uh, that hasn't changed. I, I think in technology, it, you always have to look at tech that way. Uh, although it's cool, it has to do something for you ultimately. 
it does. Easy to get lost in the weeds when you're a technologist. So. Oh my gosh, I love it. Hey, Trevor, this has really been a lot of fun. You know, again, for those of you our, our regular viewers, um, if you're watching us, you know, things might look a little different on the screen, but this is one of our new products that we're we're doing, just like we do the nonprofit thought leader. This is called nonprofit tech talk, and when we find something that we think is really a value to our sector that specifically addresses something within uh, tech, we want to be able to bring our viewers along for this discussion and this journey. So Trevor, thank you. You're actually kind of, you're our first person that we've had on for Nonprofit Tech Talk. So this is really, really fun. You can oh, find, you. yeah, it's been great. I've learned a lot from you. Um, check out Trevor's company, foundationsearch.com. They have a lot of amazing articles and you'll see the different things that they're doing and uh, really a great way to kind of understand how you and your nonprofit might be able to be thinking about things in a different way. Um, again, really interesting conversation. I am so fortunate that I get to be here day in and day out. I'm Julia Patrick, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy been joined by the nonprofit nerd herself, Jarrett Ransom, CEO of the Raven Group. The nonprofit nerd will be at AFP Icon broadcasting live on Monday and Tuesday of next week. Right. At the Bloomerang booth. So yeah, Bloomerang. So come yeah. find me. So come find her. It's going to be live um, during the the, um, the the showroom, you know, floor area. We we are so fortunate. Our amazing partners at Bloomerang actually have dedicated a space for us to produce our shows there. Mike Geiger, who is the CEO of AFP International, is going to kick off the show at you know on the nonprofit show. He's going to kick off his show, Icon at the nonprofit show. Uh, we'll have a bunch of surprise guests that come by. If you are at ICON, stop by, introduce yourself to Jarrett and uh, be part of the conversation. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Jarrett came back last year so profoundly um, amazing. Smarter. <laughs> Smarter, but I remember Jarrett, you were like looking across the show floor and you were like, Julia, it's all tech. It was all technology. The, and, I would say 90%, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so it's going to be really fun to hear what you have to say, what our guests coming by the booth are going to have to say. Um, there are going to be courses. There are going to be all sorts of things that are going on. Cocktail parties, luncheons. It's a whole thing. So we hope to see you at AFP Icon next week. It'll be a lot of fun. Hey, again, our thanks to our sponsors, Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, your part-time controller, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Fundraising Academy at National University, the Nonprofit Nerd, and Staffing Boutique. These are the folks that join us day in and day out as we move towards our 800th episode. Most of these folks have been with us from the very get-go, and so again, we want to say thank you to all of them. Jarrett, travel safe, my friend. It's going to be a lot yeah. of fun uh, to see you in action in New Orleans to get your uh, commentary from uh, guests and viewers. And so I'm really looking forward to it. Me too. And uh, we did have a, another question come in. So all of our episodes are recorded. So if you missed the first part of today's episodes with Trevor, um, or you want to share it and just go back and listen, again, uh, we stream these uh, broadcasts. So many of the, most of the streaming platforms, we're also on podcast, and then we now have an app. So go to your app store, ask for the nonprofit show. Uh, this conversation plus all of our 700 plus 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 conversations are on all of those platforms. So we're here for you. Um, free consumption, right? Uh, thanks to our sponsors and thanks to our guests like Trevor, who joined us today uh, to, to really just, you know, share his valuable time and expertise when it comes to artificial intelligence in the nonprofit space. So thank you, Trevor. Thank you very much. I appreciate the invite. It's been a lot of fun. Hey, everybody, as we like to end every episode of The Nonprofit Show, we want to remind ourselves and our community across this nonprofit sector to stay well so you can do well. Thank you so much, Trevor.